in this uh, second part of the of the talk here I want to talk a bit about more applications um, that we find for um, regular expressions in particular and um, I mentioned in the beginning of the previous talk that uh, one of the key uses is of course validation if you write um, your web applications and you want to um, um, you know validate input for forms and the like then uh, <coughs> regular expressions are a tool of choice and I'll link another uh, uh, video that, that explores that in greater detail. The um, other use cases, of course, are Unix search using grep in particular, um, which we, uh, which I'm um, not alluding to in this video because it's more centered around Go right now, um, but something we can discuss uh, in another stage. And um, information retrieval in particular. So if you have uh, larger data sets that are more or less structured, then um, there is a good use case for regex as well to extract um, uh, known structural uh, um, entities, right? So like email addresses or dates and the like. I mentioned that before, or URLs. So, but one of the applications that's particularly relevant for our case here is the idea of doing routing in web service uh, uh, environments. So, and this is a, a very, very suitable use case for our, for our purposes, for the uh, assignments that you're doing in the project that you will later be doing. So um, that's why I want to um, dive a bit into that and explore what we can do in, uh, in, in, in that area, just to give you a feel of uh, how that possibly works. So here we have um, uh, another regular uh, Go file, no magic in, so far in there. And uh, conventionally would uh, develop like a, um, yeah, a web service um, that would usually have some sort of uh, handler and would, um, that would listen to particular, um, you know, um, requests to the root, for example, or to others, right? So if we write a handler that we now call uh, handler main, for example, um, because that's the main handler we'll be dealing with, then um, a that needs to have the signature um, a response writer and um, with reference to the request, then we would be able um, to yeah, um, to basically uh, print out whatever we get. So that's the default handler. Um, if we say received on default handler, and then <coughs> we um, can print out the content as well. So if we say content equals um, using IUUtils right now, that basically reads anything we get so we, we're just reading the body for a given request just to get a get a better um, understanding of what's going to happen and then finally we print that entire content um, as well so yeah, string interpretation and let's get another handler that we call uh, um, handler sub for example so that has a different purpose on sub handler same story it basically filters the request out and then we can uh, de develop a um, simple web service that uh, delegates um, the processing of different inputs for different locations so if that's for example the sub um, path if you like then we could point this to a handler sub in this simple example so if we just um, run this see how it goes ah that won't go yet because of course i'm not doing any, uh, I'm actually not starting the web server, of course, which is, um, let's just wrap this with a um, log call, and then we just say listen and serve. We serve on the local port 8080. We bind to all interfaces. Um, and then we run this. So. Take a bit. Usually, ask me for some firewall permissions, and then ultimately the handler should be running. And we can test that easily by sending something to UL. So uh, UL is 8080. Uh, we can send, for example, a GET request for now. So no magic there, and we get a 200 back, meaning things worked out well. Uh, what does this one say here? We received something on the default handler. 
Uh, and of course, this whole mechanism is indifferent for now um, with respect to um, uh, the different methods that we could use. So if we send a post re request with some dummy content here in a JSON format, um, then we should see the output here as well. So again, on the default handler, if we address the, um, the subpath that we specified before, um, then we can do the same there and get the output hopefully on the subhandler, received on subhandler, and then followed by the corresponding output. So, so far so good. And this is of course a use case you will be dealing with if you write more comprehensive APIs. You think about the structure and uh, the different uh, suffixes that you include in com more complex URLs and so on. But um, this is kind of a pretty much a direct use case for um, uh, regular expressions, uh, this, this is kind of routing, particularly when it gets more con complex. For example, if you want to route based on information that's contained in this uh, string. So you don't need to necessarily spell out uh, um, the particular string, but you could have more, more generic um, catch uh, mechanism. So if we, for example, um, uh, think about this uh, more comprehensively, one approach of um, doing that is, of course, that we um, <coughs> write some generic function, for example, let's call that um, you know, router for now, that basically uh, has the same signature as um, the uh, conventional handlers. So let's see. Then we get something like uh, uh, like this. So basically, for now, for, uh, from this perspective, nothing much is different. I'll just, for the sake of purpose, uh, for the sake of getting a better understanding, I'll just uh, print out um, the path here, and um, then we can introduce a switch statement. And that's how the magic comes in because we can use this uh, uh, switch statement also also to um, evaluate Boolean conditions. And if you recall correctly um, from the from the previous um, session that I mentioned, it, um, the regex library does have different functionality to assess, uh, to perform validation or to perform matching. And that's something we can exploit here right now. For example, if we want to have a bit more complex uh, um, um, path here that we want to uh, reflect. For example, we want to test um, for um, paths that, for example, uh, contain uh, numeric components. We just need to uh, specify a, um, <coughs> well, a, a, a regex for that. So let's say numeric path is a, is a um, term of choice right now and um, assign this a regex and then we of course need to develop the regular expression itself um, and if we just say that the um, path contains any sort of letter um, any sort of number um, then we would assume that this um, you know should should be routed differently so what's happening here I think it complains about return types yes of course I need to uh, generally deal with the error, but right now I'll uh, suppress it. Of course, you will deal with this uh, more properly in um, in um, your assignment code in particular, for example. So we could have a numeric path um, and um, and then we can do something like this, for example, case um, this is now a regex um, representation so we can do a matching actually and we can match on string and since the URL for example is um, the path uh, in particular is a string so we can easily figure out whether uh, the path now hopefully contains a a number or not and on this condition basically um, deal with um, <coughs> deal with the um, let's create a new handler content differently right so we could say uh, on numeric path handler and then we handle num for example so we can just say handle num and forward request and uh, writer and um, in the default case we could just uh, continue what we did before and just delegate it to the 
Händler äh, Main, for example, right? So let's see if this works. Let's see if I got everything correct um, nearly, apart from the fact that I'm of course now need to submit everything to um, the router uh, function here. So we're no longer doing the actual routing up here, but we're delegating it to this function that has the signature of a handler, and this in turn right forwards it to different handlers. So um, that's one possible pathway of going about here. So I'm restarting. Uh, the web server and of course it asks me again um most likely because it's opening on a yeah okay now it's good so everything works as far as expected and we do a pair, um, post again let's see what we get and we'll see received on the default handler right so in this case um, we, we suppress this handler here um, but just um, Basically, only operate on the main handler right now. That would be the default handler. So now let's just for the fun of it introduce some sort of numeric value in here, um, and we get a 200 for confirmation, and it ends up in the numeric path handler we see here, right? So we can do uh, a bit more um, uh, differentiated checking. So in this case, you're actually already at the stage that you, yeah, can I don't know um, introduce a bit more complexity. Um, For example, you can uh, assess whether a, a particular handler only has a uh, suffix or if it only has a, has a prefix in path. Note that the path evaluation uh, um, happens after the host name. So the leading bit of the URL is not included in the evaluation. So, um, But that's the easy way you, because um, if you just print um, URL or path, then uh, you... you um, can identify this easier. However, the leading slash is still included, so we also need to include this in our um, regular expression. So if we now extend this a bit here, uh, of course we need to copy that as well. So hang on, hang on. So that is the handler num pre and the num suff. And no ring suffix prefix, so quite straightforward the whole thing. Um, and, um, now we extend the cases a bit, so we have a new case numeric um, suffix with it prefix first. Um, edge string again, we need to get the Boolean expression. To represent this and um, can then forward this to the corresponding handler so, mm -hmm. and then we copy this whole thing because it's relatively straightforward apart from this error here to have it redirected to the right handler good so um, yep let's re rerun this most likely the any firewall comment here? Of course. And let's send this uh, path again again and see where it actually arrives. So, ah, I'll see there. It ends up in an numeric path handler. And, well, you can think about why it's happening uh, and stop this video for a second, but um, um, the, 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 the choice, of course, clear because the switch statement in this case uh, kind of defines the precedence, right? The order in which um, the information is uh, evaluated. Um, so if we end, for example, now have a um, sorry a path that contains a numeric value at the end, it's still on the numeric path handler sim sim simply for the reason that uh, we evaluate this one first. If we were to move this to the to the end, of course, then you would um, change that and uh, the other handlers would have a chance to actually get um, access to it earlier. <coughs> so it's something to bear in mind when you construct this um, on your own. Now it's on the suffix, numeric suffix path handler uh, because you um, it's the first one that actually uh, matches, right? So it's not ending up in the numeric path handler, but the suffix path one. So that's a quite simple, of course, uh, uh, relatively simple um, approach to um, dealing with this. Um, and but you can imagine now that you uh, 
can, for example, uh, increase the complexity. For example, you can explore whether a um, particular, let's, let's do that one, whether, for example, t uh, a um, second path, um, or a further sub um, uh, um, path is actually detected by the um, by the regular expression uh, simply by uh, defining a new um, regular expression here. So mm, let's, let's call that nested path. And if we introduce that one, we could have a. nested and we copy the numeric one and introduce a nested path handler nested, nested path handler did I get everything right I hope I did So if we do another call here now uh, and we make it a bit more complex, you can stop the video and guess again where it ends up first. Um, but here's the answer. So it actually ends up, of course, in a numeric path handler. And the reason is again the same as mentioned before, the order um, of, of um, processing is, is given by the switch statement here simply. So if we now were to remove, for example, the, uh, the nines from here, then the situation would be uh, different. It would be on the nested path handler, right? So, but of course, if we now uh, introduce uh, numeric values again at the end of this uh, path here, the second one, then it would end up in the um, numeric suffix path handler because we didn't accommodate um, the, the nested structure. So it becomes increasingly more complex if you want to do that. So you need to think out, think through your uh, your your um, system here, but in principle, you have a fairly easy way of dealing with um, the uh, complex APIs and also dynamic APIs because suddenly you no longer um, require a fixed um, API. You can, in principle, um, let you know uh, deal with any path uh, combination that the user uh, presents or encode potentially content in the path as well and deal with this. Right, so um, it increases the power considerably. Um, one comment here is, uh, of course, that uh, Google uses its, its own RE library, RE2 library. And part of that reason is indeed um, um, performance. So um, the library is um, optimized for, for fast response. Um, um, and um, this is, uh, that's why it's kind of usable um, in, in, in such a context, especially if there's higher throughput, you should still uh, be able to um, get um, reasonably, reasonably fast response and reasonably fast routing. So um, this package is basically guaranteed to run in um, linear um, to the size of the input in terms of execution time. So um, that's actually fairly, fairly um, powerful and um, handy for our purpose. So you can happily uh, start using the, uh, those ideas. Um, the of course, the, the way we uh, we did it right now is a bit crude and is a bit of a starting point. It's more like an idea of how we could use regular expressions. And uh, it's certainly not um, the only way of doing that because if it gets a bit more complex, then you would want to be looking at more powerful libraries such as Gorilla Mux, which is uh, doing exactly that. It allows you to do matching on uh, the path um, uh, components where the path components themselves can be variables, for example and um, you can access the variables so it provides you with a mechanism of accessing the variables uh, from within um, the actual handler and so on so it's various ways uh, very rich uh, library to deal with you can explore that and, and use it but the reason for um, um, writing a very simple uh, router like this uh, from scratch was basically to show you the capabilities and also give you a starting point of how you could potentially write your own um, so there's, there's not only this one, there's uh, various um, other ones you could explore and have a look. Um, Pet is another one which is uh, rather tiny. Gorilla Mux is a big one. Uh, Routes is another one um, that you will find. Um, 
yeah so th those are um, other other directions you could go down if you're interested in um, exploring the idea further uh, in the beginning of um, the previous talk, I mentioned that uh, one of the most common libraries is the PCRE library, so a per compatible regular expression library. And while um, Golang uses the Google uh, library RE2, it's also an implementation of the original PCRE. So, for example, if you're relying for compatibility or legacy uh, reasons uh, on the interpretation of um, uh, another dialect or flavor of um, regular expressions then this package is of course also available so uh, it's by no means the only way um, to deal with regular expressions um yeah so that leaves us pretty much uh with the the main thoughts about um you know how we could use regular expression in our case i will link another video that points towards validation uh, where it's quite useful as well um, you can watch that. One thing that's of course a challenge with regular expressions is to decide when to use and when not to use them. Uh, I alluded to the, the performance aspects of regular expression and that's precisely the problem. The uh, compilation step of the expressions in evaluation is quite expensive. So that's why it's quite desirable um, to, to avoid it where possible. So if you, for example, can do a simple string comparison, uh, if you want to find a you know a component within another string, substring, then usually better off using the built-in uh, functionality from the strings uh, package. But if it's getting more complex, and that's a call you need to make, um, such as you know having um, um, systematic structures um, where you can't rely on content information but only on structural information, so syntax uh, again, then you probably for, uh, use regular expressions. So you need to be a bit mindful. The other aspect is, uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, the large number of dialects that exist in this area. And that's really a big problem um, because depending on the language you use, you'll find that your expressions or the dialect you learned may not uh, work without uh, problems. So you need to uh, look it up and um, uh, review um, your expressions carefully. My recommendation generally is to build the um, expressions from scratch so you, you it's a lot easier to detect potential errors uh, in syntax that you that you come up um, with um, over time um, so that's that's something I would also recommend you if you're doing the exercise I um, suggest that you would do in the previous um, video but also in this one so just some pointers here if you want to have a look at the methods um, the page that I um, brought up with respect to syntax is linked here on top. So that's the default uh, reference for the syntax of the RE2 library by Google, which is used by Golang. Um, if you want to learn more about the uh, methods available in the regex package, um, have a look at the second one. So usually uh, either, you know, the, the, the um, string matching or um, um, validation. And then there are also um, tools that are available for uh, validation particular such as the go validator if you're interested in that have a look at this that's good for a web form validation and the like um, but of course you can write your you can roll your own as, 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 as always um, but sometimes it's uh, good to get some hand um, some um, help from existing libraries so when you develop uh, regular expressions um, there's various um, tools available. I personally prefer just to write it in the idea well in, in Go directly so you can explore it and you saw it's literally like three lines of code. You need to uh, specify the regular expression, you need to um, compile it and then you match it against something and uh, print out the output. But there are of course ready-made tools available. One of the bigger ones being the uh, Regexer which is a quite powerful tool but it's not specific to Go at all. It's a very generic regular um, expression evaluator um, and that's that's quite good if you want to um, explore uh, a bit deeper and it's actually um, the, the UI is quite helpful with respect to giving feedback what potential matches you would have um, and it supports some uh, flavors here so it's um, quite important if you uh, are using a particular um, variant then uh, to switch to that for example PCIe as a more common one so uh, be mindful if you use those to develop your regular expressions don't expect them to work out of the box but usually it's just a matter of commenting something or substituting some of the less uh, less less commonly used um, aspects such as representation for word boundaries white spaces and the like um, but other than that fairly uh, fairly fairly similar and the other one here is uh, Go um, specific. You can look at that one 
as well. So if you want to um, learn more about regular expressions, I um, listed a few tools here that you want to have a look at. Um, if, if you like, um, regex one is quite powerful. If you really get started and you have no idea what's, what's happening, um, you can try out the, I think 10 sessions about uh, basic regular expressions where you learn step by step what you can do and you immediately explore and evaluate it. So it's quite helpful. Uh, mind you that the validation there is not particularly strong, so you can easily break it. Um, if, if you enjoy th doing those things, you can go for that as well. But this is really more meant for the beginner, uh, just to be comfortable and become comfortable with uh, regular expressions. There's another tutorials uh, um, all over the place, of course. And then there's regular expressions info, which is a very comprehensive site um, that offers a lot of resources on uh, regular expressions. I'm, I'm not sure uh, in how far you need to go into that one. It's uh, lang largely language agnostic as well, uh, but just a good starting point if you want to inform yourself more about very specific cases or want to compare uh, different language and so on, or simply find further resources. But yeah, that's uh, one possible pathway of course as well. So Golang specific uh, um, learning resources are listed here. You can have a look at those and for JavaScript, you find the reference guide uh, there, in this case uh, by Mozilla. Um, so because the flavors vary a bit there as well. Um, so what's left for me to say right now is basically uh, to give you some tasks that I would uh, suggest you do just to explore it a bit. Um, so one of them could be to um, basically you know um, replicate what we did just now uh, yourself to some extent so by the write a mini web server and then just try to um, match on different characteristics right more complex uh, paths for example sub path uh, and so on uh, and perhaps also do regular expression routing based on uh, body content which you can do as well remember that you are uh, that we currently just matching on url path but uh, you would not be constrained to match on anything else that is remotely um, um, in string form available and then a uh, bit of a challenge question here. Um, is, is, is there a way of differentiate between upper and lowercase uh, URLs in that? And uh, why or why not? So the second task that you could do, if you're interested, to do actually a validation tasks. So again, build a mini web service and uh, you know take two inputs and perform um, um, yeah, the, the validation, either yourself or using the validator and so on. So you can... Um, um, explore the validation bit, which we um, didn't really do right now uh, here. But you find another video, which I'll link um, um, you to from the uh, learning resource page um, <coughs> that uh, explores the building. They use the of validation in HTML uh, 4 and 5. So um, it may be slightly different there. So um, yeah, that's it from my side. Um, and um, we'll talk about this more next week. So um, all the challenges that I put out here, we can discuss them in class then.